Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Q at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm my host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is CB, who's a senior database engineer at SD, who goes by CB. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So we love SD, uh, Chad Dickerson followed his career from Yahoo. I think he was CTO and then he became CEO uh, of Etsy. Um, right. Great brand. But you're also known in the tech circles for having some really strong DevOps, database stuff, so big data, action, um, respected. Uh, give us the update, what's going on with SD, the company, how big, give us some stats, and then let's go and talk about the tech. One of the really smart things that uh, Chad did when he was uh, CTO was, uh, he uh, really said, yeah, look, we have, to, we have to market our engineering department. So we created this well-known blog called Code is Craft, just about every engineer uh, in the dot-com world reads that blog. And uh, we also put out a lot of really great uh, open source products. We have a thing called StatsD that uh, I think uh, just about every company out there uses. It's for monitoring things. Uh, so Etsy started in uh, 2005, but it didn't really get going until 2007. Um, we uh, create a market for people who make their own handcrafted goods. And uh, surprisingly, that is a really big market. Last year we had sales of 1.3 billion and uh, we've got about 45 million users and about 4.5 million shops. Uh, we sell things in, uh, we're active in 90% of the countries in the world and uh, we're still growing like crazy. So enablement for this basically is a scale question, right? So one of the things that's interesting with these companies is that if they hit a critical mass with scale, then good things happen. So I want you to take us through a little bit of the rise and the scale up of, of Etsy, what you guys have done, and then what you guys are doing now. So take us through the, the, the through some of the, from the opportunities you had, challenges, how you solve them, and weave in the big data story. So Etsy started out with one monolithic Postgres database. Everything was on there. All transactions, forums, convos, everything on there. And that lasted about a year. Then we said, okay, uh, we're really stressing this server right now, what are we going to do? So we started to shard it vertically. We moved some of the features like forums out to their own dedicated database, convos to their own dedicated database, and that lasted about a year. Then we said, well, now we've got to start sharding horizontally. So uh, Chad, who uh, knew some guys from Flickr because of their Yahoo connection, uh, these guys really pioneered sharding horizontally and they came in and brought their ideas and so forth. So we sharded horizontally, this time on MySQL databases. And what we did then from a big data standpoint is we said, okay, now we, we need to start getting some analytics because when you shard horizontally, it's great for looking up an individual record, it's very speedy for a website, good response. It's terrible and sucks heavily to do aggregate, aggregation. So we said, we need to do some aggregation. So how are we going to do it? So we got another Postgres database and we started replicating all our data from our shards and our, uh, our uh, monolithic uh, Postgres database to this new BI Postgres database. Well, what do we do? We just created a new master, <laughs> right? Because everything has to go on there. So then I was it's charged. from Peter, Peter to give to Paul, right? I mean, what do you, I mean, this is what's going on, right? Right. But so, you're scaling, you're growing. Well, and so then I was charged with, uh, we got to replace this thing. Let's find something that, uh, that works. So I went out and looked at all the the analytic databases, basically the columnar databases, because we wanted to do really good aggregation and uh, wound up with, uh, with Vertica for a number of uh, reasons. A lot of the folks that are watching know we have some syndication going on from sites that aren't in the, in the weeds in the technology. You know, these big sites like SD and these, these huge sites have a under the covers technology challenges. One of them is big data. So you get to a point where you're like full as a tick and then you explode and then you got to re-architect. When did you get to that point when you said, okay, now we got to go to phase three, so Postgres pushes the envelope, busting out the seams, now right. you're sharding horizontal, stopgap measures. Right. When do you get to a point where, or did you get to a point where you got some, some smooth sailing? Uh, okay, so we've always just 
uh, <laughs> we've made that each of those transitions because we couldn't live any longer with, with, with what was. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so and that's, I think that's probably like every company, you know. Yeah, exactly. You just uh, a lot of these things are just hacks, and the best hacks are the ones that live the longest time. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, so, uh, you know, this, this BI server was kind of a hack. The way we replicated to it was a hack. So once we got Vertica in-house, it's amazing what a difference it's made. Because we were able to take uh, queries that our analysts were running on this BI machine, some which took four days, and all of a sudden they're running in minutes. And the biggest surprise is we thought, oh, just our analysts will use this. But we've had to up our license add more nodes because everybody's jumping in on the Vertica action at Etsy because it's so fast and we use it to do so many different things, things that we didn't anticipate when we first got it. But we power all our internal dashboards just about on it. Uh, we use it for uh, really getting a tight loop in on our A-B testing and we run financial reports on it. So. Uh, uh, on any given day, there's probably 100 people at Etsy uh, hitting it and running queries, and we had anticipated maybe there'd be 10. I saw Chad on, I think it was CNBC or some news channel, all dressed up wearing a tie. I'm like, oh, it doesn't really, that's why I don't wear my tie anymore on theCUBE. It just wasn't fitting. And you know, Chad, if you're watching, you know, don't need to wear the tie on right, CNBC. Right, that's not the Chad we know. Come on, usually Chad. He's, he's <laughs> in a, in a yes. pretty casual attire with a highball in his hand. A little so. chilling out there. Um, <laughs> So let's talk about, we talked about the gaming guys on. Dave and I were just talking about, we had, um, we've had Peak Games, we talked to Riot Games, a lot of these guys, all big data, high, large scale, you know, right. e-commerce, whether you're e-commerce or online gaming, the real time pressures are there. You got it's a lot of scale, a lot of traffic. Oh yeah, yeah. How are you guys dealing with the big data side on, with Hadoop? It's a Hadoop world, right? So you got the need to store stuff, I'll get to a later kind of mentality, which you right. want to do, and also the production side of it. So how do you blend getting the data captured with new emerging stuff like Hadoop and dealing with the, this production, not disrupting things. How do you handle that? Well, a little bit on Hadoop. We were, uh, and we still use Hadoop, to um, improve our search algorithms. Every night, all the search terms that were used on Etsy are downloaded and put into Hadoop, and uh, we run a bunch of stuff, map reduce jobs on that, and then I think it goes into Mathematica, and they get some rules that are generated out of that that help our search. So we were doing that in the Amazon cloud for a while, but the, but the bill was like 80 grand a month or something, and finally said we got to get rid of that. <laughs> and so we just bought a 200 node uh, Etsy Hadoop cluster, right? <laughs> but here's the problem with Hadoop. It's hard. Yeah. You get, a, give me your best Hadoop engineer, and I'll give him about a one in 10 shot of getting a, a MapReduce right first time. It's a very iterative process. Yeah. And so Specialized, we, iterative, and it's also complex. Yeah, and it's really geared towards batch jobs. Yeah. But we have a lot of people running ad hoc queries, and we actually use Vertica as a front end to Hadoop. Anytime someone says, oh, I want to run a MapReduce job, we'll say, can we do this in Vertica instead? Because a lot of the data that's in Hadoop then gets funneled into to Vertica, where it's now accessible with a whole bunch of really great uh, analytic uh, functions. Uh, and so that's, that's uh, how we roll. I mean, we, we're actually doing less Hadoop now because we're able to uh, get that data into Vertica and it's kind of taking the place of that. Yeah. So a lot of people say, okay, I'll use Hadoop to do my filtering mm -hmm. and then I'll jam all the nuggets into some other database. That's kind of what we're doing. It is, okay. Yeah, we use, I'm not trying to uh, downgrade Hadoop here at all, it's got its place. But I'm saying for, you know, interface is everything. And, you know, we want to get answers and get them quickly. And the best way for us that we found is, hey, if we can get that data into uh, Vertica, then our people know how to write SQL and know how to do that really well. And uh, that's what we want to do. And the economics work for you. Oh, absolutely. And, and how much data are we talking about here? 30 terabytes we have in, um, in Vertica. Well, I mean, Tate, what's interesting is you said it interfaces everything. I like that comment because right. what you're talking about is not only the throughput of the actual petabytes, you're talking about actual human capital, all the manual work that gets automated away. So just from a workflow standpoint, I mean, think about you know, the hassles. We're seeing this in social media in our world on the big data side. It's like uh -huh. to do a certain workflow value chain can be automated right. away. People got to free up their time. So a lot of people feel like, you know, big push, make Hadoop real time, bring SQL to Hadoop, all this stuff. A lot of people say, well, Hadoop was never meant to be real time. Right. You sort of, in that camp, I mean, Stefan Groshup of uh, Datamir said, no, it's all nonsense. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. What's well, nonsense? Hadoop? Hadoop real time. It's not meant to be real time. It's batch. Uh, I, I'm in that camp. There's certain uh, other products and technologies out there that uh, want to put uh, you know, SQL closer onto Hadoop. And what they want to do is hang a lot of software on each of the nodes. And that's a maintenance kind of nightmare that uh, we <laughs> just won't go for. See, you don't want that from don't Vertica. Want what do you want from Vertica? Well, we just we want what it's giving us, which is accessibility and speed. And what's really cool about it is when it's a Ferrari. we got this. He's a Ferrari driver. We're talking about this <laughs> yeah, Ferrari right. of big data. Well, you know, there's, there's this the expression, the, the total cost of ownership. And usually that's like, okay, this software is going to cost us this and so forth. Uh, and maybe we got to hire some people and that's going to cost us this. Uh, we didn't have to hire any people because uh, we found that our, our DBAs could administer this stuff just fine. Uh, it actually shares a lot of DNA with Postgres, which we were very familiar with. But was, what was really surprising is that we didn't have to change any of our queries. We had a whole investment of many, many hours put into hundreds and hundreds of reporting queries that were running on that Postgres BI server. And we were able to bring those over and run them unchanged on really? Vertica, but just have a, a real kick up in speed. And that is a cost that we didn't have to endure. If we'd had to go and rewrite all those queries, that would have been a big expense, right? So we didn't have to do that. Because that that's going to be a big part of your migration cost if you have to rewrite everything. And that's right. going to be the biggest part of your TCO. Absolutely, it was, it was uh, nice and easy. You know, if you move cross country, you can spend 100 grand on the moving company, <laughs> and we didn't have to pay that 100K. It, was, it just worked beautifully. So, so what do you want out of the roadmap? If you know, you're talking to Vertica, what do you, what do you push them to, to, to do? You say you, they're delivering what you want, but you're, well, they, you, they, you've run out of gas <laughs> three or four times. Yeah, yeah. What and, do you want them to do next? Uh, there, there have been some really good talks today about the future and near future of Vertica, and one of the things they're adding is uh, sort of uh, their version of materialized views. So uh, these are um, projections which are, are pre-aggregate. Uh, so what that means is that you can do things like roll-ups and have those instantaneously available. For example, we have our analysts every day uh, creating tables where they're creating their own roll-ups, like, oh, for this state, here's how much activity there was. Now we can write projections that do that automatically, and so they don't have to do that anymore. They can, they can now move on to the next thing. So, so it's like a, it's a, it's a, a fast roll-up, or it's a roll-up light, or it's actually a full roll-up that's actually occurring? It's a full roll-up, and you pay a price in that, uh, when data's loaded, it's got it's to do that calculation but you, then you save on the way out when you're doing a, a, a select query. It's kind of like, uh, uh, think of this, this projection as kind of like an index where you're indexing on uh, some type of expression or function, and that's really nice. What's happened on the Etsy, on the business side? Um, you know, as you guys map out your strategy and, and, and your growth plan, what are the, what's the direction and how is that driving you know, the, the data strategy? Uh, well, one of the big things we want to do is really expand in international uh, areas, and uh, we really like having, uh, you know, being able to do deep dive into the data and look how people are buying things in these foreign countries, because there is a lot of cultural difference in, across the world, which is a great thing, and people do buy things uh, differently. Uh, I know, like in Germany, for example, they do not buy stuff via credit card. They have their own way of doing things. And uh, so we get to, and, and then also there are certain areas where certain items were more popular and we're able to, to discover that. Yeah, we had the gentleman on from Peak Games and he was saying that the, the culture overseas and let's say the Middle East is totally different in terms of who adopts games than the U.S., John. I mean, it's yeah. just. So one day. question I want to add, I know we're still stuck on time here uh, to the business model is obviously you guys are on the e-commerce side is, you know, with BuzzFeed getting the $50 million in financing just announced uh, in your neck of the woods uh, with $800 million valuation, this notion of native advertising is coming in. Mainly they're, they're in the social channels. So we all know what that mm. means. Big data is a big part of socials. We, we see that. So right. do you guys look at social as a distribution channel and look at the data piece of it, not to advertise so much to, but, but you have an acquisition of audience. You're trying to get traffic, get conversion. Right. The social graph aspect's interesting. Trusted consumption from friends is interesting. You guys have a big data play there? Well, you know, you're seeing more and more commerce happening in some of these social media things, like uh, people sell stuff on Inst Instagram, for example, and uh, so they're making money that way. So we're looking at all these channels and saying, should we be there? <laughs> it's a new affiliate channel. Yeah. I, I think it's exciting. So I, I mean, I bring it up because when we're talking, Dave and I are talking about in depth is that 
all new models are coming uh, uh, to the table because right. of big data. Well, we use big data to analyze, uh, for example, Facebook. We've got a lot of stuff going on there, recommendations by friends, and we'd like to look and see how effective is that, and yeah. big data lets us look at it. Well, we had a guest on earlier. We were talking about with three other guests, this whole retargeting thing looks good on paper. Certainly the numbers jump off the spreadsheet, but the user experience certainly is not there yet. It's a hard problem to tackle, this whole retargeting thing. How do you know when someone wants to come in just because you're using cookies, so. Well, yeah. like Any I said, interface that? is everything, you know, <laughs> and uh, you, you always have to make, I'm a, I have a, in a past career I was a product manager, and uh, I always want to make things work for the user, right? I love it. That's exactly how we feel. It's every, inter, interface is everything, user experience, user expectation, the preferred future is upon us. Uh, hopefully big data will make it better, not just to sell ads, but really make a great uh, product experience, so totally, totally awesome. Look, when I first started out as a C programmer, we used to have compile things overnight, and so that was a really long <laughs> loop. If you had one syntax error, you know, you came in and cried. Yeah, they had pages uh, back then, right? You had yeah, yeah. pager would go off. Right, exactly. So, you know, Turnaround <laughs> time, 45 minutes for the punch cards. The, the, quicker, the quicker you can do, time is money, and when you can uh, tighten your, these iterative loops, the more you can do that, the more money you're going to make and the happier you are. CB, we're put, pushing the envelope here, we're getting the hook big time. I had to push him down twice. Love staying on with you. Bring great, on the gaff. Great, great <laughs> company uh, you guys have. Love the technology. Big fan of Chad and the team. Uh, congratulations. Thanks for sharing your opinion on theCUBE. We'll be right back. Thanks a lot. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE live in Boston for HP Big Data Conference. Be right back.